Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We left off in the middle of um, Article 8, and we have a motion before us for indefinite postponement. Mr. Lalasher. Hello, hello. Say okay. Again. okay, I'm just saying we're in the middle of Article 8, and we have a, the motion before it is for indefinite postponement. And I just called on Mr. Lalasha. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Can you hear me? I wanted to bring to your attention some information that was distributed over the weekend. And first, if you didn't get it either in email or in person, raise your hand. Oh, okay, we need to talk. <laughs> um, what we did was we had, the town clerk has a pretty extensive email list um, of town meeting, not everyone. Um, we emailed things. I didn't get any kicked back, which was great, but there's still a possibility, depending on what email you use, that it might have been too large to be delivered. I did get enough feedback from town meeting members that I know in many instances it did go through, but I can't always know if, if it got kicked back for that reason. Uh, for those that we did not have email addresses, um, we ran around town hither and yon and delivered it. And then, I didn't want to say this, but for those that asked for hard copies, we also delivered them. And the reason I didn't want to say it is there was no humanly possible way to produce 192 copies in one or two days by ourselves. It just wasn't possible. So I'll apologize that that wasn't possible. Um, but just to go over briefly, um, I think the letter I attached pretty well explained it, but what was given to you rearranged the information you already had. And there's only two excep exceptions to that I'm aware of, and that's what I described as those clerical errors. So I apologize that the original format wasn't great, but hopefully the new format is better. I do want to mention, um, I, I'm fully aware of the motion in front of the body, but I also want to bring to your attention some more information I've got over the weekend from many of you. Um, the first thing is not from you, uh, David Tuttle, at some point tonight, may want to do an additional motion. Um, and that's become because, as you heard at the last meeting, there is a litigation matter. So if we are to proceed with indefinitely postponing before we do that, we'd at least like the opportunity to explain to the body what the litigation is and what the tiny, tiny, tiny portion of the proposed changes we'd still like to be able to um, pass through this body in order to settle it at litigation. Ultimately, it's up to town meeting whether to do that or not. So if necessary, David will make a motion. I'm aware of four amendments that are gonna hit the floor and a fifth one that may or may not hit the floor. Um, just so you're aware, so if anyone else is thinking of it, now you'll know it's covered. Um, John Sasso is gonna amend definition section two, and specifically, he's proposing to add something that would define an accessory retail use. Um, the reason he's doing that is because John Sasso is also going to suggest an amendment to section uh, 5.3, uh, business C, retail use, and he can describe that. Um, John O'Neill may offer an amendment to section 2 definitions for senior independent living facilities. Nancy Toomey, as I understand it, has an, an amendment for section 5.5, accessory structures to deal with sheds and others. And Tony DiRezzo also has an amendment to section 5.5 for accessory structures. So I just wanted to make sure you understood what information you did and didn't have and what uh, additional information came to my attention, at least through you, over the weekend. And I do appreciate some of the kind thoughts that you sent over the weekend. Further discussion? Mr. Schubert. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, town meeting members. Rick Schubert, Precinct 7. Uh, since I was the uh, originator of the motion, I'd like to make a few comments in light of what we received over the weekend. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Bob and Jean for the effort they put in on Friday to get this material to us. I think we're in a better place now that we have what appears to be the correct version of the proposed changes to the zoning bylaw. But in the end, I still believe it's in the town's interest for us to postpone, and I will explain. 
The intention of my indefinitely postponed motion is not to kill this article, but rather to just allow the necessary public process to play out. Instead of prematurely jumping into the discussion now, there is absolutely no reason not to move forward, move the discussion to a date sometime in the very near future. Imagine receiving the annual budget on a Friday night and being asked to discuss it the following Monday before FinCom has had a chance to hold public hearings, review, and make recommendations to town meeting. That's essentially the situation we're faced with today. As we've clearly seen, CPDC did not have sufficient time to do its job completely in the manner in which town meeting expects. Again, it's important to recognize that there is absolutely no pressing reason to move forward at this time. We have a working zoning bylaw in place today. And in September, we addressed the mar marijuana dispensary zoning issue that it was a major concern to us. If the motion to postpone tonight passes, I am prepared to make an instructional motion that says, um, next slide, please. And this is uh, certainly subject to edit as we, if we get to that point. The idea being that I would like to move it to some point in the near future so that it doesn't have the appearance that this zoning bylaw is killed, but that the proposed changes can go through a process so that CPDC has the chance to do its job, to review the documents, to make recommendations, to get the recommendations back to town meeting hands, and then have the discussion at town meeting. I think that is the process that would mo work most efficiently for all of us, and I think that's basically what we expect. So I just wanted to put that out there so you know that if, in fact, it is postponed, that that is the intention, and I think many folks would agree that we're not interested in killing this proposed bylaw change, but really we want the opportunity to have a chance to process the information and then have a real debate about it. Just in case you didn't have a chance to review Friday's new version of the proposed zoning bylaw, I would like to highlight only a few items that might require further explanation and or a lengthy discussion by town meeting. This list will be no means a complete list, but it just gives you an idea of what's ahead. My point here won't be to debate any of these items at this time, but only to provide examples of items in the bylaw the town meeting will want to discuss. Bob, next slide, please. So many of you folks may have actually seen some of these, but I think it's important for those who didn't have a chance just to get a sense of what's in the proposed changes to know the extent to which we as a body would want to deliberate and to know that it's not something that we could quickly do in one night or even two nights, but I imagine it would be a process that would take much longer. And if that's the body's wish, I think that's fine, but just to be aware for those in case you didn't have a chance to see it over the weekend. So just a couple highlights in the business C business district, there's a change, a proposed table of uses which would allow retail, sto retail stores of various kinds in business C and restaurants by special permit. Maybe that's some of the um, amendment that Mr. Sasso proposes. In the very public process, town meeting voted not to change the zoning to allow for restaurants and retail stores, but rather to establish a smart growth district for one part of the area and to allow for senior living in the other part of business C. We have been informed that the point of the zoning bylaw work was not significant changes, but rather to streamline and simplify. The changes to business C, these changes to business C do not meet that standard. And if we agree to them, that's fine. But again, the, understand, the need is to really have the opportunity to discuss rather than to move quickly as though they were just housekeeping articles or revisions. Next slide, Bob, please. <coughs> Another area that might cause some questions and additional discussion would be definitions. Um, you've seen, or maybe you haven't, but there are new, new terms in there, some of which are described and defined, and some are not defined or described. And so again, these little line items may be simple, but you know from previous past discussions at town meeting that we could spend an hour on any one of these. So as you know, debating the merits of any one of these items 
could take a significant amount of time. So I'd like to mention one other relevant issue. The longer town meeting is in session, the less time there is available for the Attorney General to act on our action to create the Summer Avenue Historic District. This item is faced with an actual timeline, and our discussions here could go on for nights, which actually would impact that. Bob, next slide, please. So that's another thing that I think it's important, important for us to discuss or think about as we make the decision on whether or not we postpone this article or jump right into the discussion. Over the weekend, I had time to reflect on why I feel so strongly about getting this right. Much of it is from the years that I spent on CPDC. But more significantly, it's due to a specific case from Reading's recent history. A situation where I, and literally more than a thousand others, worked many years to resolve a public process that had gone wrong. Some of you, in fact many of you, remember the summer of 2002 when Mass Highway unveiled its plans to expand the I-93-95 interchange. In a manner that would kindly be described as lacking sufficient public process, Mass Highway presented a plan that would have demolished about 80 homes in Reading. Once the plan was made public, it immediately placed those 80 homes plus hundreds more in surrounding neighborhoods into limbo. Property owners saw their home values drop sharply with no hope of selling if they wanted. As a selectman, I, along with others, then served on the Interchange Task Force, a new committee that was charged to fix Mass Highway's original plan and process. We did this by starting the whole process over from the beginning. Five years later, the task force finally issued its final report. So yes, it was possible to fix the problems created by a premature plan, but it took five years and probably close to one million hours, all the while keeping hundreds of property owners in a state of high anxiety. I have no interest in creating a scenario where Reading property owners are potentially placed at risk, just as they were in 2002. Considering the impact of zoning, there's a chance that we could do just that if we prematurely move ahead with a zoning bylaw rewrite, rewrite that hasn't had sufficient time for the proper public process. Again, I ask that you support this motion to indefinitely postpone Article 8. Thank you. For the discussion, Mr. Arena. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Arena, Precinct 1. Um, there are other people in this room I'd like to hear from. They're standing in front of me. Like me, you've sat in this room for three nights now, or I should say two nights, and, a, and about to start the third. We agreed Thursday to reissue, to, for the town to reissue, the current document, the document with all known updates present. And that's been done. And since that send, a number of what I view as very constructive changes and proposals for changes have been uh, proposed. You'll get a chance to see exactly none of them tonight if this motion to postpone continues. At the end of the day, this is the public forum for this to happen in. You are the representatives of Reading's 10,000 plus households. That's our job. That's what we signed up to do. I desperately would like my two hours back from Thursday night but that won't happen. I very much would like tonight to be productive. Um, like our budget, each section tonight will be taken piece by piece for review. Um, we can take section questions and objections easily as we do in the budget. I believe all of you are patient enough to understand that the document may have comments from the audience that need to be addressed. I believe you are wise enough, having seen Reading in its best and worst times. I believe this audience is collaborative. I've seen this audience work in um, contentious settings and yet get to a satisfactory place. Um, perfection is not a reasonable standard. And bylaws are never completely done and cast in stone. We can and will continue to make changes, likely many tonight. And the benefit of this document in front of you is that it's been rewritten in a single voice 
in a manner that is largely consistent section to section, and it's a substantial improvement over today. I'd like to spend the next two hours allowing you to comment. I'm interested in hearing what you have to say and hearing the ideas that you bring to the floor and hearing what your ideas bring from your colleagues in terms of commentary. But none of that can happen unless we continue. I'd ask you to vote this motion to postpone down. And I'd also ask a person in reach of the microphone to call the question so we can get on and not waste another two hours debating whether we should talk. Another discussion? Mr. Berman? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Barry Berman, Precinct 4. Um, I was, I'm another one of those people that feels completely out of my depth when it comes to talking about zoning. I was probably one of the few people when we got the clickies last time and Marcy was going through about whether we would attend a meeting, I actually wrote no, because <laughs> I, I knew I wouldn't. I don't have anything really, I, it's not something that I'm really good at and feel like I could add to. Um, I feel like discussing zoning is like root canal. Um, it's something that you just don't want to do, um, but we have to do. Um, our current zoning bylaw right now is, is like a festering tooth. Everybody says it doesn't work. There's too many contradictions. When someone like Nancy Toomey gets up and says that, you know, uh, who works with this document every day and says it's, it's unworkable, I think it gives a clear sign that we have to act. I'm gonna, I want to encourage everybody to, to turn down this... Um, uh, this amendment and to work on this and, and let's get this done tonight. Um, our zoning bylaw, it's probably one of the most important economic development documents that we have in town. Um, from my role in, on, on the finance committee, as we sit and do the budget every time, every year, we find out that our state aid is dwindling and, and, and dwindling. We have to fight for more of those resources. Basically, the way that Reading is going to survive economically is with organic growth. And part of what we do to create that organic growth is to basically have a clear and concise way of doing business in town. Not only for our current customers, and by us, we are all customers, as are the business in town, but also our prospective customers. The people who are going to come into town to invest in homes and invest in businesses. They need to have a clear document and a clear path on how are we going to do business in the town of Reading. There are so many different other kinds of um, things that are going to take up our time in the next coming months. We're going to be discuss discussing the charter, still another important document in terms of how we govern ourselves in the town of Reading. There's just not enough time to kind of to postpone this and to send a message to everybody that we are, um, that we're going to do business in, in, in Reading. I think as we discuss this, there, there, there are kind of three things that I think that we want to look at in terms of the document. I myself am not an expert, whether there's 45 feet or 50 feet of setback. I, I'm not an expert in that. But I think the three things that we should be able to look at um, are one, has anything, are there any glaring omissions? Is there anything in this document after the many, many hours that the volunteers did? Um, is there something missing that should be put in? Secondly, are there any contradictions? Basically, our, other, our, our current document is rife with contradictions and impasses. Are there any, do, do all the sections kind of tie together? And the third thing that I think as we debate this, we should look at, are the, are the standards evenly applied? In other words, is there a clear process? If I go to the building department and I get a message and say, this is what you need to do, um, will the planner agree? Is there just a, a process that, that says, this is, how you, this is how you do it? And I think we should look at the document in those three ways and make our amendments to those kinds of things. And if we do that, um, then we'll be setting, sending a message to, to Reading and people outside of Reading that we're open for business, that we have a clear and precise way of doing business, that we're friendly to development. Um, I just don't think that we, that we can afford to delay this anymore. So I'm going to encourage everybody to, um, to vote the amendment down. Um, and also, I, I wish Chief Cormier were here because he'd be our technically sergeant of arms. And let's just lock the door and get this done. <laughs> No one leave until we, because there's so many other things we have to deal with. We've got the, we've got, um, we've got the charter coming up. We've got, um, we've got the d issues with the school building. There's a lot of attention that this body needs to, to put. And I think to honor the process, 
that the, that the volunteers have done um, to put this document in front of us, albeit it was a little bit late and a little bit sloppy, but I think now there's, there's, there's one set of documents that everybody can look at um, that we can just plow through this and get the root canal done. Thank you. Ms. Binder. Angela Binda, Precinct 5. Um, I think we should indefinitely postpone this for a number of reasons. I, I know that we now have one set of documents that were online. I didn't print them out. I know somebody who went to Kinko's and did and went through it. My problem is not necessarily with one set or anything, although that was very problematic. But my problem is with um, some of the things that are being said are in the translation guide. I've gone through the translation guide. I've read things where it has said no change or very little change. And there seems to be significant changes. And I think the most important one is the proposed table of uses. In the translation guide for the proposed table of uses for business C, it says retail store up to 35 square feet under our proposed, under our current zoning bylaw, retail sale, it says retail sales business C is no. It just says no. And under our new document, proposed table of uses, retail sales up to 35 square feet, and it says yes. And under the column where it says change, all it says is formally categorized with retail sales, new to differentiate size. There's a significant change that was made in the use in business C. Restaurants and retail are, are not currently allowed as a primary use. And under the proposed table of uses, they will be allowed. And if you went through this and you read this, you would see the change. All it says is, well, it was formally categorized as this. It's not highlighted in yellow. So my problem is with the documents themselves. I don't think town meeting needs a lot more time to go over this. I would like to see CPDC go over this. I would like to see other things happen to this document. And that is why I don't think it's for town meeting to spend the next hours or a couple of days going through it. I don't like what I see in the translation guides in some of the things. I don't understand how the idea of simplify, clarify, and modernize is a reason to change use in business C when there have been so many public discussions. So my problem is I have read the documents and I've attended meetings and I've read through the minutes and when this was pointed out to me that this is now here, I thought, holy smokes, how did that happen? And I'm sure it happened somehow. But when I was reading through the translation guide, it doesn't say this is a change. And there were other places when I'm reading the translation guide. So it's not that we now have documents. And I know somebody else, a, a very loyal town meeting member who served on committees many, many years, when this was brought up to him, he said, did you realize it was a change? In? And he said, well, no, I'm not actually, I'm going through the translation guide and there was nothing in there in the translation guide that said that this is a completely different use. So that's my problem with this. And I don't think it's a matter of town meeting needing it, uh, you know, needing, uh, I think the, it is that we need one full document, but I do think that this needs to be vetted more. I think it needs to be vetted with the people who would be affected by a change like this. And I'm sure there will be an amendment tonight that says, well, we'll change it back. But how many things are we gonna change back? I mean, I really feel like what we're being given or what we're being told was the mission of this project is not what we have. I have a problem with being told that our bylaw doesn't fit what the community goals are when there's been discussion about what those community goals are. So I, I, I have a real problem with this. And even if there was an amendment put forth to change this on the floor of town meeting, I have a problem with that. I have a list of changes that I would like to see. I didn't bring them. I, I mean, we've been told no amendments, no amendments. We want to get this done. Well, now we're being offered up 
tons of amendments. I don't think they should be done on the town me, town floor of town meeting. I don't think this was ready to come to town meeting, and I think that we should indefinitely postpone it. Thank you. Further discussion? In the middle? Mr. Greenfield? David Greenfield, Precinct 5. Green lights on. Can you hear me? Um, I'm going to vote for postponement. And, and the reason is that I'm hearing, I'm hearing a lot of discussion uh, that tells me that people are not quite prepared. Um, and I think this is important. I think it's a bigger package, it's much more information, and the timeline for getting it to people um, cannot be like it was a normal meeting. Uh, the information has not been packaged fully and given to us. It takes a lot to deliberate to go through this material. I'll admit, I didn't open the email on Friday. I had a full weekend. So I'm sitting here as well, not fully prepared. Um, I further think that that confusion, lack of preparedness, the intimidation is gonna draw some no votes. In order to pass this, we need a two-thirds vote. Do we really think in the state of discussion going on now that we're gonna be passing things under the current environment. I would say we respect the work that has been done uh, and we put it before CPDC. We get a detailed report from them. We highlight the changes of substance to a greater degree than they have been so that those can be set out and clearly debated and we take it from there. I don't think there's a need to rush. I think we're dishonoring the very thing we're doing if we rush. So I would say that that time for deliberation and further preparation actually respects the process. Thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Lolasha? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, it's not my concern how you vote. It's my concern to get you good information. And I do want to just highlight, I saw an email over the weekend that I found to be quite disturbing in its tone. It talked about sneaking information in. Um, the change that has been discussed in Business C was described quite fully at a March 2014 CPDC meeting, and it's even reflected in the minutes. So I just want to assure you, nothing has been snuck in. You may not like it, and that's perfectly legitimate, but all this discussion has been at, at open public meetings. It's been noticed in the minutes of the meetings. There's a reason why CPDC chose whatever they chose. That doesn't mean that you have to agree with them, but I just want to at least lay to rest the fear that somehow there's this nefarious agenda going on, because I've seen the tone of some of the emails going around, and frankly, that's just not how we should do business in Reading. Further discussion? That appear in, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kafoya. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, town meeting members. Um, I rise to support the motion to indefinitely postpone. Um, and just a, a note, I, I'm always very disturbed when people make general references to disturbing emails without um, specific example. Um, the amount of detail included in these documents is, um, you know, overwhelming. Uh, we were, Megan and I were the ones who went to Kinko's and printed out two copies of the uh, draft bylaws of October 24th, um, you know, over the weekend. It was 162 pages, and we spent Sunday going through it, you know, line by line. Um, and that's when I, you know, as I assume other people, uh, discovered the change with respect to uh, Business C. It's very difficult to see these things um, unless people draw them to your attention. Uh, because your eye is caught by the fact that in the table of uses, uh, we've added many, many different use cases. Uh, and it was only by digging through that 
um, that I did notice uh, that the, uh, uh, the change uh, was proposed uh, for Business C. Um, so I contacted people, say, hey, does anybody have any idea what's going on here? Um, I got no you know, real clear answer. I appreciate uh, the town manager showing us the minutes, uh, but I haven't seen any emails um, that um, uh, you know, question anyone's integrity um, in this process. Uh, you know, my concern was whether the people who are directly affected by this um, that were engaged in uh, many, many months of discussions on this kind of issue, where anybody actually notified them that, that this issue was under discussion. Um, and from the reaction I received uh, yesterday, um, apparently not. Uh, and so, you know, they, they um, you know, raised their hand uh, on this issue of concern uh, about, uh, you know, this particular change. But this is just one thing. This is, you know, a couple of cells uh, in a spreadsheet which, which were changed that, um, you know, we had to, um, you know, discover basically uh, in the course of reviewing this 162-page document, uh, which was a cut down from uh, the three large documents um, that we had been uh, working from for the two previous nights of town meeting. Uh, you know, my uh, solution is not that any of this work get lost, um, that, it, it, that everybody assemble their comments, forward them on to CPDC, they hold, um, you know, a series of public meetings or whatever they feel the need is um, to refine this, uh, and we move forward. The thing to keep in mind is we do not have the entire bylaw here. Um, the work is only half done. There are significant sections um, that haven't been completed uh, by either the Zoning Advisory Committee or CPDC. Um, so we're going to be having these discussions uh, in several months. And you should also know that when we began this process, um, you know, we were informed basically that we would have a complete rewritten document for consideration. Uh, and instead now we're doing it um, in these pieces. Uh, and I think we've run into some of the problematic aspects uh, of that approach. So once again, uh, you know, I'm encouraging folks to vote for an indefinite postponement. Um, and I would certainly support uh, the idea that Mr. Schubert put forward for an instructional motion that would indicate um, that, you know, it was the desire of this body to move ahead with these discussions sooner rather than later. Thank you. Further discussion? Yes, Ms. Galvalachi. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Aaron Calvobacci, Precinct 5, and I was a member of the Zoning Advisory Committee representing the business aspect of our community. And I ask that we not vote to indefinitely postpone it because you know what? We have a place to start. And to echo what Ms. Toomey had said, our bylaw as it stands is very difficult to understand. And to echo what Mr. Berman said, this is what is going to help us with our economic development that is so necessary and important to this community. We have a working document and we understand that. This has been the most arduous task that I believe this group has been taxed with. And to those who have say tonight and have had say in the, the previous meetings, I ask that you get more involved we did not have many people from the town at our meetings. And that is what we need. On the floor of town meeting is not when we should be having these discussions. It should have been at our meetings. So please consider that and please respect the time that we had all put in and know that this is just a step in the right direction. Thank you. Further discussion? Mr. DiDario? Ron Dario, Precinct 6. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, the way I see it is that, um, you know, I really hate to say this, but uh, I, I would be more at ease if we voted to postpone it. And let me tell you why briefly. First of all, I would like to say the reason I'm saying this is my fault and I would echo the previous speaker. Um, for me, I, I'm just, uh, I'm not comfortable because I don't have a handle on it. That's basically it. Um, I did not go to the meetings. 
which I should have. This weekend I was busy. I, I was in Brooklyn visiting my daughter. Got in Sunday night, Monday morning. I downloaded it. And for probably three and a half hours, I went through it on my computer. I, there, I just reached the point I was mentally exhausted, but you can't do that the day of the meeting. I realized that. I needed to do that weeks ago. I would certainly appreciate like having something, having CPDC go over it and kind of give me a spoon feed me a little bit so I could get a handle on maybe the important things. I'm certainly okay if this amendment is not passed and that we do it tonight. I can certainly do that. Um, but I can just say, you know, I, I just, uh, I could say I don't have a handle on it. I'm really not comfortable, but I, I have to take responsibility on, uh, on myself for that. Thank you. Further discussion? Oh. Ms. Young? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Pre I'm Megan Young, Precinct 4. Um, and I'm just composing this now in my head, so excuse me if I'm not clear. Um, when, I, uh, when I heard about moving this forward because we need economic development and because businesses need, we, we need to improve our business climate, I guess I stumbled, I, I guess it really concerned me and I thought about, okay, was it always the intention of business C um, for, you know, by, by the ZAC, was it, or by whatever, was it, was it, a, a priority to make that an economic area. And if it was, why wasn't that in front of me? We heard about accessory apartments, medical marijuana, um, all of the things that we were supposed to pay attention to. And this is a significant difference in a zone, a business zone. The people that live in that business zone haven't been informed. And it and knowing that right now where we are in Reading is dealing with a business that's coming into a residential area and we're not liking it, I'm not sure that we're not doing the same thing to that business area, that business use, without them having a say and me making a, deciding to vote on it without hearing their concerns, or if, if, if they would even be interested in that. It might be they would, but I don't know. And I don't know that being locked up with the hundred of you who I like very much um, would um, make me feel like I'm making a good decision for a group of people who I also know and love. So I, I can't, I, I, I just don't think I can go forward knowing that there's been no public conversation with that community, the, that business zone which has residential that hasn't been informed in the same way we were informed of major changes that have gone on so far. So I will be voting to and definitely postpone so that we can allow that group of people to have a say the same way that we permitted that we allowed the Summer Ave folks to have a say and to share with us how they feel before we voted on it. So I guess that's where I stand and I thank you for listening. Further discussion? Yes. Steve Herrick, uh, Precinct 8. Um, I think uh, well, first off, I want to say that I have a great deal of respect for all the work that's gone into the documents that we've been trying to review the past couple of weeks. Um, this is incredibly important to the town. Um, what strikes me uh, when I hear this conversation going on and when I try to attempt to review the documents, I have sat down for an entire evening and read every single page of what I see here, and it is incredibly overwhelming. And I, um, I uh, What strikes me is that I went through the back of this, and there are warrants back here. I, there's a listing of all the warrants that have gone into this document, and I, I lost count, but it's somewhere around two. I'm, I'm sorry, there's somewhere around uh, 200 plus warrants that have been passed over the years since 1942. I'm sure Bill Brown can give me the exact number. But um, 
if there are fundamental changes, if we wipe the slate clean, and I don't think we, I'm not suggesting we have, maybe that's an overstatement. Uh, if we're changing fundamental aspects of the way that we are zoning this town, um, and this, this business C issue is just one of them that might be buried in there, and, and I don't think, I don't think that I'm, uh, I've read this carefully enough to understand the other fundamental changes. Every single one of these warrants, I'm sure, invoked a great deal of discussion at town meeting when it came up. And I don't think we're respecting the process if we move forward quickly without a full understanding of any changes that might be in here that we don't understand. Um, I think we need to pay due diligence to this document and what it means to the future of this town. And um, I, I think a little bit more time is warranted so that every member here, every member of this board, uh, this um, the town meeting, understands what it is that they're voting on. And if there are substantive changes, that we give it due diligence, the same diligence that these warrants that have been carefully crafted through the years to guide the future of this town um, that was given. I, I think we, we owe our ancestors, we owe our, our descendants that, uh, that respect. And, um, and I do respect all the work of the committee, and I'm not trying to dispense it. I think we're almost there. But I do think we need to take that extra step to make sure that everybody here does understand the substantive changes that might live in this document so that uh, we make the right decision for the future of Reading. Thank you. Is there further discussion? None appearing. Are we ready for the vote? Oh, was there a discussion? I'm sorry. Ann, Ma Ann Landry, Precinct 5. Uh, with all due respect to the proponents of this motion, I would urge my fellow town meter meeting members to vote against it. Uh, I think it would be great to be able to get to the substance of the conversation and to have a full airing of all questions and concerns uh, and so we can work through them uh, going, going section by section. Thank you. Further discussion? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jeff Strubel, Precinct 7. Uh, point of information, if I might. Um, the motion to indefinitely postpone, can that be made at any time during the discussion of the motion? Can it be made, say, for example, if this motion fails? Can it be made later? not necessarily by the same person, but by anybody. Uh, could it be made at any time? No, this is your chance at it. The only chance, yeah. thank you. If it gets voted down, it would not, could not come up again. Further discussion? Yes, on the aisle. Paul McNeese, Precinct 2. Um, I would urge to continue on the discussion that we're having. I think it's important to have it tonight, but I think we move forward and actually review this document. I think the reality is, whether we do it tonight or we do it in three months or six months, whenever we come back, however we want this process to happen, the reality is it's going to happen collectively with us here, working through it as a group. So I'd like to see us move forward, do it tonight. To anyone who kind of has a fear that we are rushing through anything, we've now spent two and a half plus hours debating whether or not we want to have the debate. So I don't think there's any risk that we're gonna rush through anything. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Further discussion? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Greg Salvatelli, Precinct 6. I move the question. This is a motion to end debate on the uh, indefinite postponement. It requires a two-thirds vote. Mr. Brown, would you uh, take the honors for the right section and the Board of Selectmen? Oh, yeah, I, I, I will mention that. Um, Mr. Crook, would you take the right center? Mr. Rushworth, would you take my left center? And Ms. Russell, would you take the left? Uh, before we take this vote, however, I would point out if, if we should end debate, there will be a secondary motion under this article that would take up one small piece of this. But uh, we'll get to that if, if that is necessary. Okay, so right now, what the motion before us is to end debate. All those in favor of ending debate, please rise. Moderator. Oh, excuse me. Uh, how are we going to do the count in front? Who's going to count the selectmen? Um, Mr. Brown will count the selectmen. Do we have town meeting members down here? No. Okay. Okay. So, uh, once again, all those in favor of ending debate, please rise.
31. 24. 24. 33. 33. 33. And all those opposed to ending debate, please rise. Seven. Seven. Two. Two. One. One. Zero. Zero. The vote being 121 in the affirmative, 10 in the negative, the question has moved, debate has ended. We will now move to the question of um, indefinite postponement. This requires a majority vote. So we will take a show of hands. All those in favor of indefinite postponement, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And a moderator is in doubt. Again, I ask people, all those in favor of um, uh, indefinite postponement, please rise. Eleven. 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 Eighteen. Eighteen. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. And those opposed? Twenty-two. Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Seven. Seven. Eleven. Eleven. The vote being 63 in the affirmative, 66 in the negative. The, um, the indefinite postponement has failed. We will now move on to the main motion. We will take this up as we do with the budget. We will take it up in nine separate sections. And as each section comes up, we will have discussion on that section, and any potential um, uh, amendments will be taken up at that time. I believe there was a uh, request to take up Section D first. Is that correct? Point of information, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Tafoya. Yes. Uh, some of these sections are actually interconnected. Um, for instance, Section D has a definition. Hey, can you use the microphone? Thank you. You're right. Well, I will point that he was asking about the, que the sections being interconnected. That I was referring to the sections A through I on the, the motion sheet. It, do you have a copy of that? Yes. Okay. Do you still have a question, though? Or? Yeah, okay. because okay. If, if as we go through something like section two, which is definitions, um, but then we actually go further in the document and we find items that we think might actually, um, we would be served to have a definition for, even though we've passed section two at that time, would you still yes. allow? I, I would allow that. That's I, a good point. Yeah. I, it, when it's practical, we will allow that. Okay. Um, as I stated earlier, there was a, a uh, request to have Section D first. Is that correct? If not, I'll go back to Section A. Oh. Okay. We'll start with Section A then. Section A, which uh, begins deleting Section 2.0 definitions, and it continues on. Is there discussion? Yes, on the uh, far right, Mr. O'Neill. Mr. O'Neill. John O'Neill, Precinct 4. And may I ask for those of us who are hard of hearing that people speak up. I'm having a very difficult time this evening. I don't know if it's the microphone system or whatever, but you know, I don't want to have to ask for an accommodation which would inconvenience everyone. But so anyway, my amendment, uh, and I understand it would be deemed to be a friendly amendment, oh, is on in Article 2 on definitions on senior and independent living. The intent, I believe, is contradicted by the language. It says, it's on page 12, if people, it says that in a, an extended or intermediate care facility that provides dwelling units for residents over the age of 55 and continues on. However, the language extended or intermediate care facility is only used for institutionalized populations in Massachusetts. And in fact, for at least the last 25 years, intermediate care has only been used when applying to the people with development disabilities and not to seniors. So I would suggest that 
the language read, a facility that provides. So remove extended or intermediary care facility and just say a facility that provides and continue on from there. And I think uh, an indication if people have been reading the, the Chronicle, there's been an advertising advertisement for senior independent living for the last couple of weeks, and you'll, and you'll notice that not once is the word care mentioned because it, it isn't, it's contradictory. Usually there's three types of, like an extended, continuing care retirement community has independent living, assisted living, and skilled nursing facility. They are three separate entities. This confuses all three. So what you, what you want to do is to separate it off, independent living facility, and yes, extended or intermediate, intermediate care should be removed. Mr. Lasher, is that the change that you just put up? I can just barely turn it on the corner here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is the one that his proposed change is up here then. Okay, is there a second to that, by the way? Do you have it? She does. Okay, she has it. Okay, thank you. Further discussion on either Section A or that proposed amendment? Mr. Tafoya? Thank you, Mr. Moderator, town meeting members, Ben Tafoya, Precinct 4. Um, I guess I would start with kind of a general question. Um, and again, it is to the point earlier, is that many of these definitions relate to things that are in Section 5, the table of uses. Um, there are a number of new de definitions that are placed in the, this uh, draft zoning bylaw, um, but there are a number of new uses that were introduced under Table 5.3 that don't have specific definitions um, in the, uh, the definition section. Um, so, uh, you know, things like um, uh, an age-restricted multifamily dwelling, a tourist and trailer camp, a beacon, a commercial amusement, indoor recreation. Um, you know, that's just sort of some of them. And I didn't know if there was sort of a, a method to this as to why some things had definitions and why others didn't, um, or whether, um, you know, folks were interested in working through definitions um, for some of these issues that aren't specifically defined um, that uh, originate from the table of uses in Section 5. Is there a response? Sure. Age-restricted multifamily dwelling, tourist and trailer camp, beacon, commercial amusements, indoor recreation, um, accessory convenience store, skilled trades facility. These are some of the ones that I had identified that are in the table of uses. A couple of them were in the old table of uses or the existing table of uses and never were defined in the existing bylaw either. Um, but uh, you know, that was an issue I raised. I just wanted to raise. Oh, yeah. Car wash is another one. We all think we know what it is, but do we need to actually have the definition? Uh, because, you know, my car wash might not be the same as yours. <laughs> is there a response? Mr. Miaris? I'll give it a try. Uh, the idea was most words have commonly understood definitions and therefore don't need to be defined. If we defined every word we used in the whole bylaw, we'd have uh, you know thousands of definitions. So you have to assume that most words have their commonly understood meaning. Uh, the words that seem to have um, uh, on some uncertainty about what they meant, we tried to define. Uh, whether that's a perfect delineation of every, uh, uh, of every term, um, that's for you to judge. But the idea was commonly understood terms don't need a definition. Things that are not commonly understood need a definition. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. Tuttle. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, David Tuttle, 
Precinct 3, uh, Zoning Advisory Committee, and CPDC. One of the things that we were doing deliberately in the definition section was to remove regulatory language. We wanted them to be as much as possible a pure definition without creating uh, a separate uh, restriction or regulation on the items being defined. And I think we, in most cases, achieved that. But it's also, as you say, we did not want to have a, a dictionary. Further discussion? Mr. Brown? Yes, I am here tonight, and I've been here the other nights. Uh, there's a couple of definitions I think that should be in here because every time zoning comes up, uh, I hear it. Uh, one is nibby, and the other is snob. Further discussion? Oh, uh, Ms. Young. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Megan Young, Precinct 4. I do think one that uh, we do need to find is commercial amusement, mostly because if you look in the uses, commercial amusement is something that the Board of Selectmen do by special permit or something, right? Is that correct? So um, if perhaps, so if I'm looking at my definitions and I'm this business and I decide that I want to use commercial amusements and it says in business A, it is by special permit by the selectmen. However, place of assembly is yes. So I don't have to go to the board of selectmen for that place of amusement. So I'm not sure what commercial amusement is. If it's like King's Bowling, by the way, under our definitions, place of assembly actually lists a bowling alley. And its primary use would be a bowling alley. But they have amusements, they have drinks and bar and whatever. Um, so where, how would that determination be made if there was not a definition for commercial amusement? Thank you. And by the way, I did look up commercial amusement in a couple places. Framingham just redid their zoning bylaw. So I do have a um, definition, but it's called indoor amusement facility. And I don't know if that's the same thing, but I pulled a couple of ones out that if we did want to add that um, particular definition, I do have, a, well, at least a couple of options. Thanks. Further discussion? Yes, on the far corner. Thank you. I hope everybody can hear me. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charles Stanley Moran, Precinct 7. I'd like to uh, make a motion to, uh, oh, I must preface this. I do have a, uh, a financial interest in agriculture. Uh, I have uh, one hive of bees that produced $400 uh, dollars worth of honey this year, and I have chickens, and I get one to three dozen uh, eggs a week. Uh, so just want to reveal uh, that. Uh, I'm making a motion to remove poultry and bees from the definition of agriculture. Is there a second? Second. Continue. Okay. Uh, bees currently are not... Uh, regulated by uh, the town of Reading, and that by right anybody can have a, a beehive in their yard. Uh, bees do serve an important uh, need. Uh, they pollinate uh, fruit trees, uh, nut tr trees, uh, berries, uh, vegetables. Uh, bees are responsible for about 30% of the pollination of the food that we eat. Uh, and currently there are no regulations, and under uh, further in the regulations, uh, they're proposing that you have to have them 50 feet away from a property line uh, under agriculture. Very few communities regulate bees, and much, many of them have much more reasonable regulations uh, in terms of the distance from property lines. And in terms of poultry, 
Uh, I have a license from the Board of Health to keep up to six chickens. And, you know, there are probably uh, people in this room who think, oh, you know, he's an old hippie or something like that. But uh, there are other town meeting members uh, from various sides of the aisles who uh, have uh, raised chickens in our community. And, you know, I've talked to some of my neighbors who, uh, when they were growing up 60 years ago in Somerville, they had chickens, you know. Chickens are, are not something to be afraid of, uh, and the Board of Health has plenty of regulations uh, to protect the chickens and protect people, and you know they're not a source of uh, vermin or, or other things. So uh, I suggest that we stick with the current uh, regulations of poultry and uh, let those bees get out there and do their business. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. So just to be clear, this time it's really loud, uh, just to be clear, agriculture is a protected use under the State Zoning Act. So if you want to protect agricultural uses, as you must under the state law, you want to include everything that the state includes. So the state includes the raising of poultry, the state also includes the raising of bees, in their definition of agriculture. They are protected. We must, uh, under certain circumstances, uh, permit that by right. And when I say under certain circumstances, I, what I'm referring to is if, if the land area is more than five acres, or if the land area is more than two acres and the person involved uh, makes um, more than $500 per year on it, that is, meets the definition of agriculture, and it's protected. So we, it's probably not a good idea to start taking things out of the definition because it will make our bylaw inconsistent with state law. Further discussion? Yes, uh, Mr. Schubert. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Rick Schubert, Precinct 7. Uh, Town Council, to follow up on that then, uh, the previous uh, request or discussion is um, so if if the property is less than two acres which most of them are and I'm sure the previous speakers that's their case are they then protected even though the definition so either way they protect it if the definition still contains bees or if it doesn't contain bees are they protected still either way you said the state law said two acres it had to have state two acres in order to be protected and so, in this case, probably most, anybody in Reading, there are few that are two acres or more for the lot size. Are you looking up an answer? So you see what we have done here is we have divided agricultural uses that are protected by, under state law. And then the next line says other agricultural uses. They're all permitted by right. Further discussion? Ms. Young? Okay, I'm getting the hang of this. I'd like to make an amendment for, um, to include commercial amusement facility. The definition is indoor entertainment, amusement, or recreation facility. Okay, okay hold on one second. Sorry. This is quickly going to get out of hand. Yep. I think we're going to have to change the way we do this. I will come back to you. Sure. I think from this, we may have several amendments in this. We may, I think we're going to stick with discussion on the amendments as, e as each one comes up, and then we will vote on them, and then move back to the main Come back to yeah. the ones that aren't in yes. the definitions? So I will come back to you. Cool, all right, okay. thank you very much. Right now we still, we have two amendments. After this, I will, I will only allow one, and then we'll, we'll discuss that. Uh, yes, right here. Mr. Vaughn. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jamie Vaughn, Precinct 4. I, a question, if I remember correctly, you can currently have poultry and you do not have to be 50 feet from the property line with the, with the chicken coop. 
Is the title point of order? These are definitions. These are not regulations. You are discussing something that is in an entirely different section of the bylaw. I understand, but what I want to know is if we take poultry, if we leave poultry in the definition of agriculture, does that mean that it will have to be set back 50 feet from the property line? And by taking it poultry out of the definition, does that mean it can be closer than 50 feet? Which, which I think was the intent, but I might be wrong. Attorney Ari. I'm not sure where the 50 feet uh, from the property line exists. It's not in the zoning bylaw. So I don't know where that, that um, provision um, exists. However, I would like to amend the answer I gave a minute ago. So if you, um, I indicated that, that agricultural uses that are not protected by state are um, permitted everywhere in, on that table, but there are two ta there are two use tables in the residential zone. Uh, agricultural uses that are not protected by state law are subject to a special permit. But I don't know where the 50, 50 feet comes from. If that's a board of health regulation, that's not affected by um, by the zoning bylaw. Okay, continuing on discussion on the two amendments in. In front of us, is there further discussion? Yes. Richard Moore, Precinct 2. On the last point, uh, you asked where it was. It's in section 4.3.6B, agricultural uses. Any structures used for garaging or screening of tools, which farm machinery or vehicles, or for providing housing pens or enclosures for livestock should be located at least 50 feet from any property line. So. There it is. That's good old search and word. What so. section was it? 4.3.6 B. Uh, it's new, new, new. In the new section, it's 5.6.4. Also B, if you will, it's in uh, translation guide. Come on. Translation, translation guide number two on page 42. Okay, further discussion? Ms. Webb? Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Town Meeting Members, Elaine Webb, Precinct 1. So I just want to clarify, because um, I am in favor of keep allowing people to have bees and chickens, and it seems to me that if we take the, those out of that definition, then they no longer fall into the, on the accessory use table of the residential table, they would no longer fall into agriculture use eligible for protection under Mass General Law and under residential, it's yes, and all the way across, yes, 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 yes. So if we take them out, we remove the bees and the poultry, then it goes into other agricultural use, and I'm speaking mostly about ag um, the residential, and you would then fall into this having to have a special permit in all those. So it's, I'm questioning it. I'm okay. Kind of, I want <laughs> well, to keep, uh, allow people to have the bees and the chickens. Okay. I can't figure out. If you take it out of the definition of agriculture, then it's in limbo. It's not. Otherwise, it doesn't appear on the use table. Okay. So, so if you exclude it from agriculture, it not only isn't, uh, it not only is it inconsistent with state law, but then in the part of it where it says agricultural use is not protected by state law, the um, uh, it's not included in that either because you've taken it out of the definition of agriculture. So, if you want to protect those uses. You need to leave it in the definition. And if, if there's an issue with where structures are located, that's a different point in the discussion? That's, uh, 
and I'm sorry I, I did not know and, and I couldn't quickly find where, the, where it is, but, I, uh, but there is a, a uh, provision in there for agricultural uses that does indicate um, that um, a, a 50 yard setback, that's in a different section, it's in section 5.6. Okay, but we can address when how get to far the beehives or the chickens can be at a different point in time as long that's as we it. keep them in the definition of agriculture? That's it. Okay, thank you. Further discussion on either of the two amendments? Yes, on the by far right. Uh, Charles Stanley Moran, Precinct 7. Uh, I'm having a hard time understanding how having to go to uh, get a special permit for either a chicken coop or a beehive simplifies things and makes uh, government more friendly. Uh, so I think we're sort of defeating the purpose uh, of the uh, making these changes in this regard. Thank you. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. Crook. Stephen Crook, Precinct 2. A point of order. It seems like we're straying from a discussion of sec the new Section 2 definitions into a discussion of the new Section 5 use regulations at this time. Well, we have two proposed amendments in that Section A, and that's what we're discussing. In Section 2, no? Yes. I mean, what we're discussing, one of the things right now is definition that, uh, definition that includes poultry and bees, among other things. I think the point but we seem to be straying to a discussion about how far chicken coops need to be well, in Section 5. Right, which we said would come up later on. Which, which is certainly worthy. I'm just not sure this is the time to discuss which the distance. Which is why the previous speaker was said that would come up at a later time. Yes. Further discussion on the amendments? Okay, we will take the uh, second amendment first, which is the one that would remove the, uh, the poultry and, and bees. All those in favor of that amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. And then we go back to the First Amendment, which was made by Mr. O'Neill, and I have forgotten what it was. Uh, we've <laughs> Senior Independent Living, thank you very much. Okay, all those in favor of that amendment, please raise your hand. Was there a point of order? I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, take out the words, under senior independent living, we would take out the words as extended or, or in, excuse me, oh, crossed out, in extended or intermediate care. We would remove those words. Okay, all set? Okay, all those in favor of that amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion carries. We are now back into section A, and Ms. Young, you had a uh, proposed amendment? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Megan Young, Precinct 4. Um, I would like to make an amendment to add commercial amusement facility. I have a definition if you want to just type it in. I don't know if that, or do you want me to read it? How would you like me to do it? <laughs> read it slowly, okay. Um, commercial, commercial amusement facility. I feel like I'm in a spelling bee. Um, in, indoor entertainment, comma, amusement or recreation facility, comma, unless exempted by law, such as movie theater, bowling alley, billiard room, or tennis club. Next sentence. Okay. Billiard room or tennis club. And I guess this is where the selectman would come in if I'm reading this right. Noisy activities shall be at least 100 feet away from lot line Well, I didn't come up with that. Framingham did. Um, so I mean, uh, um, so I, I, maybe I guess if, if the intent is, I guess my question is first, am I making an amendment? I don't even really know what commercial amusement is, yet I know select would have to make a decision on it, so I think it's important to have that definition so there's a clear 
delineation between the two. So I'm assuming it's about noise. Is that true? Do you guys know? Ms. Puma Lasher. If I could just ask a question as to why you use the word facility as opposed to forget the word facility. Forget it. Oh, so cross uh, that out? You can out. forget that. I just was reading verbatim from them. Okay. I don't really care. It okay. doesn't look like we've used facility. Well, because we a, a commercial amusement facility is quite different than commercial amusement in some way. Okay, so yeah, I think that's a great point. Take it out, please. Um, but again, my question is, I'm assuming that the reason we don't have a definite, it's something that the select would have to make a decision on. I'm assuming it's about noise. Is that a correct assumption? Ms. Novalasher. I suppose it could be any number of things. Um, I know one of the things that it's most often in front of the board is simply to license the activity. And in some cases in the past, there's been a fee associated with the license. So for instance, the amount of TV screens a place has is considered under this. If you go back to the beginning of uh, Jordan's furniture, when it had that horse racing thing, that was clearly, you know, uh, you know, if this was one of those uses, and I don't know what other kinds of uses there are, whether, you know, climbing up the ropes now is or not. It's, it's not something that comes often in front of the selectmen, but the purpose it comes is for licensing, and any of the selectmen current or present, feel free to speak up. Right. I, but I do think a definition is needed to, to, dis, to distinguish between when the selectmen make the decision and when it's just a regular use. Yeah. Is there a second to that? Second. Ms. West? Will you, will you complete? I'm sorry. I am. I oh, think okay. I am. What I wanted to do is just offer a, an, an alternate uh, definition because there's a potential that we could have commercial recreation that's outside and not just inside. And, um, we tried to limit listing long lists because then if you don't have it in the list, that can create a problem. Um, what I've found here online just looking is the provision of recreation-related products or services by private enterprise for a fee. Um, that, that's something simple and, and seems like it covers it potentially. Mr. Miari, did you have a comment? Well, it, I'm assuming you're not taking a summary amendment on that. If not, if not you still have, uh, your amendment is still before the body. Anything you all say is great. I don't know what um, it is. I'm relying on you to provide the definition. I just found one. I didn't know what it meant. I just think it's important that we define it in the definitions. That's all my concern is. Mr. Meares. Whatever definition you come up with, it's important that um, definitions clearly distinguish between a commercial amusement and something that we already have in, defined, which is place of assembly. So right now we have a definition in here, place of assembly, which is a facility providing accommodation for groups of people to gather, either regularly or occasionally, in an enclosed space, including theaters, cinemas, bowling alleys, lecture halls, and banquet facilities. So if you want to define commercial amusements to include some of those things, or if you want to switch this around, just when at the end of the day, we, we need to know whether the example uses are in one category or the other. So as you're, as you're coming up with ideas, please try to keep that in mind. Okay, right now we have Ms. Young's amendment before us. If that should fail, we will take up yours. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Marlowe, writer. Greg Savatelli, Precinct 6. Um, just to follow on with that uh, comment, I had saw that actually we have the health, exercise, and fitness club, and we use an example of a tennis club. So I'm in, I'm in favor of having a definition, but we may need to strike out tennis club because of that contradiction with the other definition that we have. Thank you. Point of order, Ms. 
Brother Schneider. Gina Schneider, Precinct 5. Um, I thought that what Megan, uh, Ms. Young said was that she would accept Ms. West's definition as an amendment to her so that we'd only be looking at the is, broader Ms. Young, one. are you okay with that? Okay. Is there any objection to that becoming the amendment? No. Okay. Thank you. We will, we will now refer to Ms. West's as the uh, amendment we're talking about. Mr. Schubert? Do we have it up there? Can you read it? I, I cannot see it from here either. Commercial amusement, the provision of recreation related products or services by private enterprise. Okay, further discussion. Mr. Schubert. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I would also suggest uh, to consider adding uh, the accept of adult uses. Um, in the definitions, we've dropped adult uses, but I don't think it'd be a stretch of an imagination for somebody to say that that could qualify for commercial amusement. Um, so I think we have zoning to describe where adult uses can occur but it might be worth our while to have some limitation on uh, the expanse of commercial amusement to eliminate adult uses. Are you proposing an amendment to the yes. amendment? Yes. Would you repeat exactly what you want to add or subtract? There we go. That's, that looks good. Okay. It's so we will, we will vote on that before we vote on the amendment. Further discussion? Mr. Munn? Jamie Munn, Precinct 4. Uh, a question under the current system, do the numerous health clubs in Reading, are they considered commercial amusement? And did they have to get a special permit as for commercial amusement? Do we have a response? No. <laughs> well, this definition would include, I believe, a fitness club. So if we pass this, then all those fitness clubs would have to come and get a special permit under this, uh, under this provision. And also, if we don't say for a fee, it's not commercial. Could be a birthday party. So I, I, I would support the original definition. I think it was more applicable to what we're trying to regulate. We're not trying to regulate children's birthday parties or fitness clubs. Mr. Tavoya. Yeah, just to clarify, I think this might make a difference. In the table of uses, there is another category called indoor recreation, which is also not defined, but I assumed it meant like health clubs. Further discussion? Yes, on the edge. Tom O'Rourke, Precinct 2, uh, I understand the intent of adult uses, but I mean, literally, recreational services could be used by adults, right? I, I think the, the intent is to, I'm sure, exclude a, adult entertainment, however that's described. So I, I'm just not sure, you know, it's uh, going to handle adult uses. I think that could be confusing. Yes. Mr. Westerman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Joe Westerman, Precinct 3. I'm looking at the definition as offered there, and I'm wondering, would that apply to REI, where they run their special programs for a fee that people pay to attend? Do we have an answer? Definitely recreation-related. They uh, do things from climbing to wilderness first aid to uh, various and sundry trips and other things. Mr. 
left me out. Let me try to address your question and then the previous comment as well. Uh, let me try to address your question and then the previous comment as well. Uh, remember that there is a blanket um, provision that addresses accessory uses um, even if they're not on the table. So anything that is customarily incidental and subordinate to a principal use is automatically authorized if the principal use is authorized. So in the case of REI, they have a retail store and the various activities that they run are in conjunction with their retail store. I would assume, without knowing anything about what actually is going on there, I would assume that those are all customarily incidental and subordinate and they are permitted exactly because it's a store. So there's no need to address that further here. So. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure that I understood the intent as well as the verbiage. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, previous comment asked about adult uses. And if you're going to, if you want to use, uh, exclude adult uses in this definition, then you probably should make a reference to, um, um, to, the section that addresses adult uses, which is 5.6.2. Um, so um, I think what you want to do is adult uses as defined in section 5.6.2.2. Who wasn't made For that? now, that would be okay. Remember that one of the things that we will eventually do is we'll move all of the definitions to the definition section, and at that point we might want to futz with that a little bit more. But for now, that would be okay. If town Council, is, Mr. Schubert, would you accept that as a friendly amendment to that? Is there any objection? That'll, okay, and then up here, and that'll be... Uh, okay, Ms. Uh, Anthony? Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Camille Anthony, Section 5. I don't know if anybody else is feeling the angst I am. This just doesn't seem right. I, I don't know, and I've got to tell you, I feel like it's leaderless up there. I wish somebody, I don't care who, but I wish somebody were up there at least leading, looking at whomever's supposed to speak next. I really feel like we're leaderless at this point. But my, what I'm wondering is, if we need a definition, and there's all these questions, why can't we go through the section and say we need a definition for this, we need a definition for that, and somebody needs to explore it, but if we do this, we're gonna be here till Christmas. I, I'm just, I think the, the process right now is broken, and I would like, and I have no idea, because we haven't heard, we're starting on a section, how many sections are we gonna do it seems as though we go through the sections, we make our, our, our points known where we have problems, they go back. I mean, we certainly don't have to vote tonight on definitions. At some point, we've got to vote. But if, we, if we're going to continue with this, we're going to lose people. Thank you. Um, yes? Hi, Nancy Toomey, Precinct 3. Um, if I could just recommend, uh, this document is a living and working document. It's not perfect. And I really, except for a few perhaps words that need to be changed here or there or some uh, specific things that we're concerned about that we would like to see in this document, I would really hate to start putting in specifics like this. I, I don't know whether commercial amusement is planning to come up before the selectmen before March. I don't know if it's going to come up anytime in the near future, but I would suggest that perhaps the process could move along if we said this is something that should be looked at and perhaps it comes back to us in March as a definition that has been fully vetted 
by the selectmen, by the CPDC, by everybody who's worried about it, um, and can give us then a response as to what that definition needs to be. I'd hate to put this in and then find out that it messes something else up. So right now, the document is, is really cohesive, and uh, I think we've gotten ourselves into problems in the past with this document because amendments have been made that are not necessarily uh, consistent with what our intent is. So I would vote, I would recommend that people vote down this particular amendment and hope that uh, it can be taken under advisement by the CPDC and then back in March after a full vetting, it comes back to us and we add it back in. This is not a one-time fits all, we're done. This is gonna be ongoing probably for the next 10 years, who knows? On the, uh, oh, Mr. Schubert. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Rick Schubert, Precinct 7. Uh, with all due respect to the previous speaker, it doesn't take that much of a memory to understand that there was a time when we didn't have any protection against, um, or zoning protection against adult uses, and we had an adult bookstore on Main Street just north of Franklin. And the community outrage really forced us to come up with A, a definition, and B, some re zoning restrictions. Therefore, commercial amusement, I think, without a definition, exposes the community to what we spent much time trying to prevent. And so I would advocate that we maintain some definition that at least restricts uh, adult use as defined in Section 5622. Thank you. Ms. Arena. John Arena, Precinct 1. Mr. Moderator, is there a parliamentary procedure whereby the method we're on, which is to propose formal changes, could instead permit us to identify a section that needs further attention without specificity to what that attention needs to be? Rather, a definition is missing, there's some uh, need for a greater clarity, so that we can move on and cover some ground. Is there a parliamentary vehicle to accomplish that with? Well. Ultimately, you have to take a vote on the entire amendment. If you've questioned something, it doesn't change what you're voting on. So there is a problem. If you propose a particular amendment, you have something to choose from. If, if you, you're not voting on recommendations, if you, if you understand what I'm saying. I understand. Um, we're, kind of, we're seeing how the sausage is made here, and uh, it takes a, sometimes a bit of time to get it right. As a practical matter, adult uses are actually covered in an entirely different section. So to the degree that they are referenced here, that use needs to be compared against the adult use section. As a second point, um, commercial amusement has never been defined in our bylaws formally. It's used, but the term has never had a definition. And to my knowledge, it's never had an issue. The third point is all uses of commercial, commercial amusement are under the um, uh, special provision by the Board of Selectmen, so it's not by right. Um, all those would lead me to leave, at least in this case, to move on, echoing Ms. Toomey's point. Perfection is a goal, but it can't be our um, point to move on. I think good enough for this section, we can continue on, and, and these will continue to be amended. Thank you. Further discussion? Yes. Mr. Doxer. Mark Doxer, Precinct 1. I'm wondering if there's a way in this definition rather than defining what is and what isn't. Just to say, provision of recreation-related products or services by private enterprise, not elsewhere defined. not elsewhere defined. So specifically, adult use is elsewhere defined, so that wouldn't be required in the definition. Uh, maybe this is a friendly. And to Mr. Meares' original point, that we need to be careful about what we put in that's already defined. Can't we just put in language that says not previously defined, or not elsewhere defined? Mr. Meares. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, to th I'm trying to think of a nice way to say that, but the, um, I don't think not elsewhere defined helps us very much um, it be because 
then we can debate what is and what is not elsewhere defined. Um, the, and the definition really means that anyway. That is to say, when you have a use and it could be in this or it could be in that, somebody's going to have to make a judgment, generally the building inspector, does this qualify under this or does it qualify under that? And the one that's more specific uh, is the one that, that would tend to dominate. So um, certainly if somebody asked me which one it was, I would go with whichever is more specific. Uh, so not elsewhere defined is probably not good drafting form, I'm sorry. Further discussion? Oh, yes, on the edge. Marie Ferrari, Precinct 5. Um, Mr. Mayeris, could you tell me, is there much of a difference between place of assembly and commercial, assess, uh, commercial amusement as we're looking at it right now? I mean, we're prohibiting or we're allowing, um, I think, it, it, theaters, cinemas, bowling alleys, lecture halls, accommodation for groups of people to gather either regularly or occasionally. What are we trying to accomplish with commercial amusement? That's, I, I, I'm having difficulty with this in the accomplishment of what it is. Mr. Tuttle. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Dave Tuttle, Precinct 3. I don't recall exactly when it occurred, but the issue is not um, an exclusive use for commercial amusement. It's most often an accessory use. There was an issue that came up with uh, pinball machines at uh, Fuddruckers in Jordans. And the reason for the definition is not, is not primarily uh, as a principal use, but is primarily as an accessory use where we want to have some uh, opportunity. And in fact, the Board of Selectmen, I, I believe, uh, claimed that control because of that circumstance. Further discussion? Then appearing. Oh, yes, Ms. Lloyd. I'm Patricia Lloyd from Precinct 8. Um, I've been struggling with how to explain um, and understand whether we should go through all these definitions and come up with new ones at this point. I think it's important to note that the people who did the work on this worked very hard on it. And I really support hearing everyone's concerns about it. I really do. Um, but I think in some respects, for example, if you look at the table of uses, it includes under recreational uses, commercial amusements, indoor recreation, and place of assembly, and only place of assembly is specifically defined. Um, it's important to note that when we're putting a bylaw in place, it is not meant to be the be all and end all and define everything. Um, and we don't want it to be. We want um, the Zoning Board of Appeals to be able to look at situations as they come up and decide what, what this best fits under. I don't think anyone sitting here today can come up with definitions for every possible outcome or every possible thing is that's going to come up um, in front of the board. Um, and as much as I want to hear, um, I really do, the concerns about what happens if this comes up or what happens and, um, if this com comes up, that's an important discussion to have. I don't think that the definitional section is the place to start changing things. Um, thank you. Further discussion? Then appearing. Oh, Ms. Young. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, Megan Young, Precinct 4. So I guess I'm confused because I went to the CPDC meetings, a couple of them, and um, they were very concerned about 
you know, um, making sure they broaden the use cases so that it wouldn't go to Zoning Board of Appeals. In fact, they can make a decision on a use. So they wanted the uses defined. Um, I'm assuming that the ZAC committee went through these definitions. I'm assuming that they said which ones we should include or not include, yet when I look at I forget what it's called, what's the one where it's um, age-restricted multifamily? Is that the one that's missing? Um, you know, when you get something like that and you put it out as a new definition, but what age is act, what age do we actually mean as a town and that's not defined, I'm thinking if we introduced a use, we must have had an idea of what we meant by that and probably should put it in a definition as every other area in that table is defined except for that area. So I guess more than anything, I just like to hear the logic that, um, that maybe like a style guide, um, for lack of a better term, about how they determined what definitions are in here and which aren't included and why they're not included when two out of three of them are included. Why would you not include the third one? I guess I was just trying to figure out the logic of of um, this decision, and and I guess the more that we would say, oh well, it's not perfect. Let's send it back to CPDC um, to to work on those definitions. They get themselves into the same situation that they're in. You've created a use case, and you don't have a definition. So my definition and your definition are different. So who's right? Well, we don't know, and there and and therein lies the problem with what CP or actually what CPDC said their problem currently was. So um, I really, I, I absolutely hear everybody that says, why are we doing this? I guess I'm wondering about where was the logic about including or not including definitions, and I think that might guide us forward. Thank you. Further discussion? And appearing, we will not, it's getting a little confusing, but I'll explain what we're doing. We have a, a proposed amendment that, that reads, the provision of recreation-related products and services by private enterprises. We further have a, an amendment proposed to that amendment that adds the words, except for adult uses as defined in section 5.6.2.2. We are currently working on that amendment to the amendment. We'll be voting on that. All those in favor of that amendment to the amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion carries. Now we will vote on the amendment as amended. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion carries. Any further business under Section A? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Harry Simmons, Precinct 4. I think I got a simple one, all right? I'd like to correct an error, I believe, on uh, page 10, uh, lot width, there's a diagram there. All right. The definition is arbitrary. If you read it, it just says the width of a lot. That's in and, and is tangent to the front, front uh, lot, front line. If you look to the left where the cul-de-sac is, the definition there of lot width, if you go up one on the trapezoidal, uh, it's tangent to the top, the bottom line. Who says that that's the right line? But, excuse me. Okay. Okay. The, 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 the trapezoid that, that the thing is, that the pointer is on, if you move that circle to the right, it gets bigger and it's still tangent to that bottom line. I propose an amendment to, in, to put in front of the word diameter on the largest of the circle. Now, you can, you can debate whether it's the largest or the average or the smallest. The smallest is shown. So that's, that's, uh, that would be confusing. What is the lot width there? That's my amendment. Add the word largest. Did you in front of diameter. Okay. 
Okay, is there a second to that? Second, Mr. Crook? Stephen Crook, Precinct 2. Does not the phrase, the front lot line, mean the same thing as the frontage? In which case the frontage would be the part of the cul-de-sac at about 8 o'clock from the, the word lot width on that trapezoidal lot. So the, the frontage would be this section. I stand corrected. Not, not that. Thank you. Mr. Simmons, did you withdraw your? I withdraw that. Any, uh, any opposition to that? No? Okay. Uh, further discussion? Ms. Binda? Yes. Can I bring up the new definition or are we still? Yeah, you, that, that has been withdrawn. Okay. I have a question with um, the definitions for yard front and yard rear. Um, the current definition for yard front is the yard extending between the building and the street line and extending across the full width of the lot and yard rear is the yard extending between the building and the rear line of the lot and extending across the full width of it. So the current definition seems to establish all boundaries, a beginning, an end, and the, the sides. And the new definition, and I'm not sure why it was changed, but it says the area extending away from the street line on which a line has frontage and across the full width. So it establishes the front boundary, the area extending away, but it doesn't have an end point. And I'm just thinking in a triangular, like a pie-shaped lot, it says across the full width. Well, what if the full width, the w widest part is in the rear? And the same thing with the yard rear. It establishes one boundary, but not the other one. So I, I don't... It seems to be more ambiguous, but I'm not sure why that was changed. And do you know what I'm saying? It, it currently, the, the current definition ex establishes a front, a back, and side. And the new definition just says it extends away, but it extends away from the beginning, but where does it extend to? What is the, what is the end of the front yard? And where does the... Mr. Tuttle, do you have an answer to that? Oh, uh, Mr. Meares. Hold on, Mr. Tuttle. Mr. Meares, first, and you may want to get up. <laughs> you can probably do this as well as I can, but the point is that uh, it's the area, the front yard is the area extending away from, I'm, the point is the front yard is the area that extends from the street back. And the required front yard is specified in the intensity regulations that we'll get to. And that's why it doesn't say how far back, because what's important is what's required, and that depends on the intensity regulations. Mr. Tuttle, do you anything to add? Yeah. Basically, iterate the, the same. Uh, we spent a long time discussing this because there has been a lot of confusion, and we ended up with both an, a carefully accurate but minimal definition and graphics. The, the front yard is the, from the frontage line, side yard is from the side line, and the rear yard is from the, the rear line. And the dimensions are entirely controlled separately. They're controlled by the um, table of dimensional controls and by the physical building. It's, in the definitions, it's um, more confusing to have the, uh, a greater constraint. Thank you. Mr. Mon. Jamie Mon, Precinct 4. I'm more, I thought I understood it, but now I'm confused. In this diagram, it's clear that the front yard goes from the street to the building. The backyard goes from the back of the building to the back of the lot. But if you look at the definition, it doesn't even mention the building. 
So it extends, if you look back at the definition, which we had up there a second ago. Mr. Meares. And the it, reason it for that is that the required front yard might be, might extend beyond the building, or it might extend less. So the building does not, does not have anything to do with where the front yard ends. The required front yard could extend into the building. I'm going to get lost going building. home then, because I won't find my building, I guess. Further discussion? All right, we're ready to move on. To, oh, Mr. Moore? Uh, Richard Moore, Precinct 2. On the definition of kennel, it says if you've got two animals in your house and a friend needs to drop off their animal for the weekend, you've just become a kennel. Is that, am I reading that right? That's on page three, I think. A two. Okay, so the definition excludes premises where all of the pets are owned by the owner or occupant and no boarding, breeding, raising, grooming, or training is conducted for a fee or other commercial gain. So I think it would be a stretch to say that, that somebody who drops off is suddenly, um, suddenly turned a normal house into a kennel. But then the animals aren't owned by the occupant. Indeed, that's true. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, a second point, uh, auto graveyard, I'd like to propose an amendment to add back three or more uh, vehicles. Uh, I have an industrious daughter who bought herself a used car that died. She took it apart in our driveway to try and repair it. By that definition, when she took the car apart to work on it, we became an auto graveyard. I'd rather that did not happen. Do we have the spot? Uh, so where our facilities maintain use or operate strength for buying or selling wrecked, scrapped, ruined, or dismantled motor vehicles, uh, or three or more motor vehicles. I believe before motor, so. That's good. Thank you. Okay, is there a second to that? Second. Second. Further discussion on that amendment? All right, we will take. Oh. We, yeah, I'll come to you right after that. Carolyn Whiting, Precinct 7. I think the three or more should go before wrecked, selling three or more wrecked, scrapped, ruined, or dismantled motor vehicles. Is that okay with the mover? Yes, any uh, problems? No, okay. Ms. Delios? Jean Delios, um, I just want to point out before we get too tangled up in this definition, that auto graveyards are prohibited. So whether it's one, three, or however many, they're uh, not allowed. Thank you. Further discussion on the amendment? None appearing. All those in favor of adding the word three or more in, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. Further business in section A? Yes. Uh, good evening, Mr. Moderator. Andrew Hurley from Precinct 1. I'm going to try and set a good example and not spitball or wordsmith an amendment. But I am just some uh, thought for the CPD uh, here that the definition of abandoned, I think, is weaker than a lot of other communities. 
I don't think it takes into account the phenomenon of foreclosures since the uh, 2008 housing crisis. You have a lot of zombie titles out there where real estate owned uh, entities, be they out of state banks or whatever, string out a foreclosure so the owner is not really the owner, the owner may not be there. I'm concerned that uh, a lot of abandonment out there is neither intentional, done by the owner, or voluntary. But I'll just leave it at that. I'm not offering an amendment. Just some concern about that language. I think other communities have stronger language in combating abandoned properties. Further discussion? Yes, on my far right. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Nick Safina, Precinct 3, and member of CPDC. I believe this definition is for an, a use and not a property. So the abandonment of a use. Uh, a house is residential. I don't think it ever loses its residential use. Further discussion on Section A? Are we ready? We will move on to Section B. Discussion on Section B. Appearing? Oh, Delios? No. Oh, uh, okay. We will move on to Section C. Discussion on Section C. Oh, hold on a second. What? What is it? Or B? Section B or C? Mr. Sasso, which section is it? Section B or C? Yeah, I have a Section B. I'm sorry. B. B. Okay. Sasso. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Sasso, Precinct 2. Um, I'm not sure the best way to handle this. Um, I did uh, spend time going through uh, Section B, which is the administration. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Bear with me with my glasses here. Um, uh, yeah, Section 4, administration. Um, there are a number of items in here that I found that uh, some are just simple typos. Some are references that are uh, pointing to the wrong place. Um, I, I'm not, I mean, I'm certainly happy to go through them. There's probably six or eight of them. Um, I don't know if you want to handle those as one amendment um, or what the best approach is for that. Uh, Ms. Delios? Uh, yes, Jean Delios. I think we wanted to do the definition and then maybe move on from there. So. I did you mention you wanted to do something with the, one of the definitions? Yeah I, I, yeah, I wanted to wait. For that, I thought we'd be better off waiting until Section 5, because that's where, it, if we add that section, if we add that definition first and then go back, it'll, I think it'll be confusing. So that's what I thought. But I think we've moved on to Section B, which is why I was talking about okay. that. So. Um, why don't we take them all? Well, do you think that the, your opinion is they're all connected? Or they're, no, they're not connected. They're, not connected. they're just, they're, they're, some of them are questions, some of them are typos, some of them are uh, things that, that aren't... Um, we'd aren't, be, we'd better uh, take them separately, I hate to say it, but we... Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so the first one is section 449. I'm going to take my glasses off because I can't see with, with them on. Uh, so it says special permits shall require a vote of at least four members of the SPGA. Um, does that require that it needs to be a majority vote? Does that have to be a unanimous vote? Is there um, specific for that? Mr. Meares? State law requires four votes for a, um, uh, so what's called a so-called supermajority. So that, that provision is, um, is required by state law. Okay, so it's not, okay, all right, so it's a, so it's not, we don't have to define it unless we wanted to define it being unanimous then. I don't think you could do it as unanimous. State law requires that it be four. Oh, okay, okay. Um, section 4513. Um, the last part of that sentence says section 4.3. It says, to, this is, and this is in the section regarding the, um, the Zoning Board of Appeals and their powers, and then it says, to hear and decide applications for special permits for those uses for which approval of the Zoning Board of Appeals is required in accordance with the provisions of Section 4.3. 4.3 is um, CPDC. 
So I'm, I think that needs to be 5.2.1, which is the um, area where it defines um, the different zone, uh, variances or special permits uh, allowed and, and who the authorities are for each. Go back up to 5.2.1 is where it identifies which, um, where ZBA is uh, identified as, an, as a special permit authority. Thank you, Manette. Yeah, you think he's correct? Sometimes it's hard to find stuff. Um, I think that that's a, that is a typo it, in the sense that it was probably not, not translated in part of the translation. And I think the correct reference should be to 5.2.1. So I would encourage the uh, maker of the motion to accept that as a friendly amendment. Is there any exception, any uh, problems? Okay, we will consider that as part of the main motion then. We don't need to take a vote. Continue, Mr. Sessel. Okay, uh, 4.6.2.3. Point I think that should be, um, the second one should be section 4.6.2.2. Again, just a typo. Could you repeat that, I'm sorry. Uh, there are two references in that first sentence to 4.6.2.1. The second one should be 4.6.2.2. Okay, the town council says that is correct. Is there any objection to making that as part of the initial motion? Not appearing, Mr. Sasso? Um, 4.6.4.1, uh, A, uh, excuse me, section C, within five days of the date stamp, um, it says the CPDC shall transmit one copy. Um, I think the answer is it should be the town planner. because it is the town planner that's actually date stamping it at that point and has the application. And Do you agree with that, Mr. Meows? Okay, again, uh, if there's no objection, we'll make that as part of the main motion. Okay, continue, Mr. Sasso. Okay, the, the last um, item, um, the least that I think is falls into this category is 4.6.7. And I, I was just suggesting at the end of the first sentence, the CPDC shall file a written decision with town clerk stating the application is approved and as submitted approved with conditions or denied. And I wanted to add the words in accordance with section 4.6.4.1D. Where is that exactly? Which section? 
four point six point four, four, uh, in, she's typing it in right now in accordance with four section five. four point six point four point one D D is in dog. Is there a second to that proposed amendment? Second, Mr. Sasso. Um, and the last last item I had in this section is. Uh, excuse oh. me. Is that is that uh, we're going to take a vote on that one unless unless we feel that that should have been in there in the first place? Is that a typo, or do you think that's a? Acceptable. Okay. 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 So, is there any objection to making that part of the main motion? Not appearing, Mr. Sasso. Okay. Just the last question is actually on that section 4.6.4.1D. This is a question which potentially could turn into a motion, but, but let me just ask it. So, the way the uh, ver the wording is written there is that the CPDC shall hold a hearing within 45 days of the date stamp, and then within 45 days of the conclusion of that hearing shall approve with conditions deny the site plan or, or submit a written decision. Now, I know in the past, um, if I remember correctly, and forgive me, my memory's a little rusty, um, we had the site plan review process had an overall 90-day um, process, and so this actually, the way it's written, could result in a much smaller overall process. Now, maybe that's what we wanted, um, but I'm just curious if that was the intent, um, meaning that you could hold the hearing, let's say, within 20 days, and then you only have 45 days after that. I'm just curious if that was the intent. Um, I know we've, again, you, we can always, within the context of the hearing process, uh, re, um, postpone the, um, the uh, review um, um, by, uh, by agreement. But I just want to make sure that was, in fact, the intent. Do we have a response, Mr. Meares? Gene assures me that that's the intent. But I would just like to point out one thing. The way this is set up, it's the, the second 45-day period extends from after the hearing. So when you've got something controversial and the hearing takes multiple days, you don't have an ultimate deadline between the beginning and the end, so you don't need the, to work it out. It does, the second 45-day period does not begin to run until after the hearing Until closes. the public hearing is physically closed. That's correct. Okay. Okay. That's it. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Further discussion in Section B? Yes, Ms. Young. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Megan Young, Precinct 4. Um, hopefully a friendly amendment to 4.2.2. Um, change the word, the two words, punished by, and the first sentence to subject to. Uh, is there a second? Second, Ms. Young? Uh, yes, this is for Ms. West particularly, who said that um, she'd really like um, violations to be business friendly, and I think the word subject to versus punished is definitely speaking to that. Thank you. Okay, for the discussion on that amendment. Not appearing. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Motion, motion carries. Further business under B. Mr. Uh, Tafoya. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Town Meeting Members, Ben Tafoy, Precinct 4. Uh, on Section 4.5.2.1, which is variances on page 20 of the document, um, it says, no variance shall be issued pursuant to Section 4.4.1.2, but I can't find that section anywhere. So is there something in particular in the bylaw that we were looking to reference at that point?
the errors? Just a typo, 4.5.1.2. Okay, then my next question. Is question. there any objection to making that part of the main uh, motion? Not appearing, Mr. Tafoya? Uh, yes, so then um, as that section reads, there are uh, 4.5.2.1, there are four subparts, um, unless the Zoning Board of Appeals finds that A, B, C, D. Um, is, and my reading of this, and I just wanted to make sure, is that the applicant has to meet all four criteria, A, B, C, and D. Yes. The answer was yes. Uh, okay. And we're comfortable that it's written precisely that way. Right the and at the end of C. Okay. okay. Thank you. Further discussion in uh, section B? Yes. David Zeke, uh, Precinct 1, this is just another typo. There is no 4.4 4 paragraph number. Special Grant Authority for, oh, they have it there, okay. Is there any objection, any objection to that being part of the main motion? None appearing. Further discussion under Section B? All right, we will move on to Section C. Where was the hand? I'm sorry. Oh, excuse me. Carolyn Whiting, Precinct 7. And this is another thing that looks like a typo to me. In um, 4.5.2.1, paragraph A, in the second line, it says, but do not affecting generally the zoning district. And I think it should probably say, but do not generally affect the zoning district. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, we just imported the bad grammar of the state statute, but I, I agree with you, it should say generally affect instead of affect generally, even though the statute actually says it the other way around. Is there any objection to that being part of the main motion? Not appearing. Any, oh, I'm sorry, the town clerk has not found it yet. What page is that on? Page 20. We found it. <laughs> Further discussion on section B? Yes. Oh, oh. What was the question? What was? Delete the IMG section. Yep. Okay, did I get that? Okay. Yes, for this under B, yes. Charles Stanley Moran, Precinct uh, 7. Uh, section B, uh, I'm looking in my book and I'm not seeing it. So what, cover, what sections are being discussed right now? I mean, I see transition section two. I, I, I'm not understanding what is being discussed right now. Thank you. But I see what he's saying, section B, okay, a new section 4.0, yeah, section B, which is section four, administration, yes. Further discussion on section B. Not appearing. Uh, oh, what was that, generally? We're, t we're taking the word generally, unless there's any objection as part of the main motion. 
Okay. Section C, reading section 4.0 and so forth. Discussion on the section C? None of it. Mr. Sasso? John Sasso, Precinct 2. So this is section 5, correct? The new section? Okay, thank you. Um, so I'd like to make an amendment. Um, it will unfortunately bring us back to a definition in section two as well, but it made no sense to bring it up then. Yes. So I apologize, Mr. Moderator. Um, so there was obviously discussion um, earlier regarding the issue of the um, retail in business C. Um, so I'd like to make an amendment to um, try to address that. And there are two parts to this. Um, the first part is within the actual table to um, change in um, retail store up to 35,000 square feet in business C from yes to no. Um, the second part of this amendment, um, and this is something that um, uh, has come out of CPDC and I certainly feel that it should be um, further uh, vetted and discussed, but is to add a um, ex accessory use for a, new, a newly defined accessory retail use for up to 35,000 feet um, with a note, um, the accessory use would be allowable um, in all districts with the exception of business C, which would require a special permit. Um, and then, so there'd be a new note seven, uh, which would say in business C, up to three accessory retail uses may be allowed for a total combined area not to exceed 35,000 square feet. And then there is a new definition in section two that would go along with accessory retail use. Okay, Mr. Sasser, I will take the first amendment to change in the no to yes. I'm sorry, if I got that right, right order? Yes. Yeah. The, the other piece seems to be out of scope. That seems to be adding something that was not proposed at this point. So I would recommend that you recommend it to a, to a, for a further future town meeting, but I would accept your first okay. point. Okay, no, uh, that's fine. I definitely want to keep the first yes. motion in, okay. um, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Okay. Further discussion on that proposed amendment? Can you just clarify what was proposed to Sure, on the table, which is on page 27, uh, retail stores up to 35,000 square feet. We are changing, you, you're proposing that we change yes, yes to no. Right. We got that? I'm just repeating. Okay, good enough. Okay, further discussion on that proposed amendment. Not appearing. All those, we'll take a vote on that. All those in favor of the proposed amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion carries. Okay, further business under Section C? Yes, Mr. Donnelly Moran. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charles Donnelly Moran, Precinct 7. Under the new Section 5.6.4, uh, I do have a, a question uh, for somebody who currently has a chicken coop when the uh, regulations get changed. Uh, is there a grandfathering process, or uh, or do I then have to move the uh, the chicken coop, which by uh, town regs uh, isn't movable? Mr. So the nice thing about zoning is everything is grandfathered. So um, any change in the zoning um, does not apply. That's why you hear the term pre-existing non-conforming. That means that it complied with the zoning before. When you change the zoning, um, it does not require you to, uh, to bring yourself into compliance with the new provisions. So everything in zoning is subject to grandfather. What about uh, uh, beehives that there currently is no regulation, so well, you, you know, I, as, I, as I mentioned right before, now. we've now protected your beehives, but, but the, um, to the extent that you're saying beehives are not subject to, were not subject to regulation before, but are subject to regulation now, they would not, that would only apply to new beehives. Okay. All right. So in section 5.6.4, uh, I would like to change the 15 feet from any property line 
uh, or 50 feet from any property line to 15 feet. And I do wonder how livestock is defined, whether that is all agricultural animals or whether that's just uh, cattle you know, or, and sheep or something. I don't think it was defined. Okay, first, do we have a second to oh, his yeah. proposed amendment? Yes. Second. Okay, Mr. Donnelly Ryan, you all set? Y y yes. Uh, uh, chickens and bees have many benefits, and uh, if we required that they be placed 50 feet uh, for properties under uh, two acres, which <laughs> that covers most people, uh, you know, it's going to have to be in somebody's house. Uh, and uh, just because, you know, most people don't have 50 feet from any of their property lines. And, uh, you know, if you're uh, aware of uh, agriculture and trends, you know, there are lots of people. Uh, people in Somerville have chickens and beehives. You know, it's not uh, a big imposition. Thank you. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Yes. To me. Nancy Toomey, Precinct 3. I wonder if it would be better, because I'm not sure that I would want pigs or sheep or livestock of other nature next to my house that close, if it could be done as an exception. So you say any structures used for garaging or screening for etc at least 50 feet from any property line, except for non-commercial, residential, or I, I don't know exactly how to say this yet, uh, chickens and bees, or just only make it chickens and bees, because those are probably a little bit more acceptable than pigs and sheep and other livestock. Um, so I don't know if Mr. Durant would like to think about that. Thanks. Further discussion? Ms. Herrick? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Karen Herrick, Precinct 8. Um, could we just clarify again? Are we talking about this particular paragraph? Is talking about an Eric's, a commercial enterprise with lots of income versus um, we heard $400,000, $400, and we heard, you know, just residential usage? Because I thought I heard um, our town council say that this is a, when we're talking agriculture, we're talking full-fledged business and protecting it, which is fine. But uh, I find this section to be a bit confusing. I just wanted to clarify. Do we have a clarification? Mr. Mayors. Again, the definition of, of agricultural use is such that uh, it either has to make a little bit of money, $500 a year is not a lot of money, but it still has to, has to be that, or, and be two acres, or it has to be um, uh, five acres um, to qualify for the state exam the, the state uh, protection. We have defined agriculture basically to include all of those various activities, regardless of the size. And we have said that in residential districts, those need special permits. And in the, in, in the um, other districts, they would be permitted by right. So this is a this is a, um, a discussion of agricultural uses. Um, the the term when you say okay. size 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 of what size of the money being generated size of uh, how come you're saying five hundred is the state law and it says a thousand up there or are we just going above and beyond? If we're just trying to, because I, I think we're trying to find commercial enterprises here. Says a thousand there, 
but it's 500. I'm going to have to ask my associate. There is. There, there's just a difference between having a business next door and having a bunny hutch next door, 15 feet away from the lot line. But we didn't talk about rabbits. <laughs> mm. That's right, I'm wrong. Thousand is the right number. Okay. Oh, okay. I said 500, okay. but it's Thank really you. a thousand. That's why we write these things down so we don't have to actually remember them. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Yes, Mr. Doxer. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mark Doxer, Precinct 1. Um, what are the, the current setbacks for agricultural uses that we have in place right now? Are they, in fact, 50 feet? They are currently 50 feet. Okay, so what, what's in the amendment now is to change it down to 15. But I think I like Ms. Uh, Mrs. Toomey before um, would have a concern with that. Would rather see an exception added to this uh, as opposed to changing it completely to 50 feet, to 15 feet. Um, should we entertain an, an, an amendment to it? I guess. Uh, you could do that. It might be confusing. One way to do it would be to vote this up or down, and then if it, if it passes, we go ahead with this. Otherwise, I'll call on you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Further discussion on this proposed amendment? Mr. Donnelly Moran? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charles Donnelly Moran, Precinct 7. Uh, so I've heard that okay, this doesn't apply, it's only agricultural uses of two acres or five acres, but it says, special permit for certain agricultural uses. No, I emphasize no, agricultural use shall be permitted on a parcel of land less than two acres, dot, dot, dot. It's not saying except for, you know, the, in a residential area, you know, so I think this is an issue that you know, I know the state has the rules about, you know, two acres and five acres and all of that, but, you know, that, for most of us, that doesn't apply. Further discussion? Are you all set down front? Okay, we will proceed to a, oh, Mr. D'Addario. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ron Dario, Precinct Six. On that same um, on that same article, five point six point four. <clears throat> I'm just wondering <clears throat> um, where it says that no agricultural use shall be permitted on a parcel of land less than two acres, and it continues uh, if the sale of products produced thereon generates less than a thousand dollars per acre and i find that it, maybe it's me but should that say more than a thousand dollars i'm and that's just a question it seems if it produces less than a thousand say it produced you know 25 dollars per acre or something no agricultural use would be permitted. I, I'm, I'm just confused by it. Thank you. Ms. Mears? Well, not everything is as logical as you might think it should be. But the only thing that's protected is commercial agriculture. And so the $1,000 is, is, is the cutoff. And it actually does, um, it does mean that we have to permit by right anything 
that is two acres and $1,000 or five acres. That's what we have to permit by right. If it's less than 1,000 and less than two acres, then the, the town is free to, um, is free to uh, regulate it. Now, you actually caused me, uh, there, there actually is a contradiction which we probably need to fix. Because that sentence says that it requires a special permit anywhere, and the use table says it requires a special permit only in the residential districts and not in the commercial districts. So depending on which one you want, we either need to fix the sentence or we need to fix the table. While you're thinking of that, further discussion on the 50 versus 15 feet? None appearing. We will take a vote on amending the word 50 feet to 15 feet, and the livestock sh shall be located at least 50 feet from the, any property line. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. Mr. Doxa, did you have a proposed amendment? Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mark Doctor, Precinct 1. Um, what I'd like to suggest is an amendment in here that would, uh, in 5.6.4b, I'm not sure the exact wording yet, but to allow for um, a special permit to be granted in certain other circumstances um, and requiring a, a smaller setback. I'm not quite sure how to propose that. Maybe it's more in 5.6.4, allowing for a special permit. No, I think it's in B. Um, what I'm trying to do is, is figure out a way to, to help Mr. Don Lee Moran here. Maybe suggesting that a special permit could be granted um, by CPDC um, for certain livestock only with the setback to be 15 feet. I'm afraid we need exact wording to vote on. Or in the case of bees and chickens, at least 15 feet from any property line. Okay, can we have that? Rabbits. Rabbits was suggested as a friendly amendment. Oh, can we get that keyed in?
I sat down there. Is that the amendment you, that you proposed? <laughs> Actually, there was a friendly amendment requested to add rabbits into the list. Is there a second to that proposed amendment? <laughs> second. Further discussion on the amendment? Mr. O'Neill. John O'Neill, Precinct 4. I don't know if anybody else is feeling frustration on this particular one, because we're talking about, once again, simplifying. And so now something that doesn't require a special permit, you're, gonna ha you're adding a process. Can't we, you know, there has to be some way that we can not add on and still allow a use that now doesn't require a permit to continue not having allow a permit, or at least at least they bought a health maybe, but a special permit? It just doesn't seem to accomplish what Mr. Donnelly Moran is just asking us to be able to continue to do. And other people, I know that he's not the only one in town. So I think we should find some way to accommodate without, I, I don't think this language goes, goes to his, uh, the sense of what he's trying to accomplish. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. Westerman. Joe Westerman, Precinct 3. I believe the word located should be uh, in front of, uh, should be special permit, uh, um, if it's located at least 15 feet from the property line, it looks like something's missing there. We don't talk about where they're located. It's in the yeah. sentence above. Yeah. Are we adding the word located before at? Which shouldn't be special permit bit above where the livestock is located 50 feet from the property line. We, we talk about 15 feet, but not located. Okay. So we don't say where it is. So here's what you do. Okay, but you don't need that much space, so. So. House, housing, pens, housing, comma, you need a comma there pens or enclosures for poultry, rabbits, or bees. Strike must be and put located. At least 15 feet from any property line may be authorized by special permit. Thank you. Does that work? Yes. Is that acceptable to the mover? Any objection? Not appearing. Continue uh, any further discussion on this particular amendment? Yes. Ann Landry, Precinct 5. Uh, just looking for another alternative to um, remove the requirement for a special permit for these kinds of uses. What if we put um, the exception after no agricultural use? So no agricultural use except for the raising of poultry, rabbits, or bees, comma. That run in, would that run into any issue with um, state law? I understand it wouldn't. It wouldn't then um, provide for the 15 feet. Okay, so requirement. As I mentioned before, we if you if you're going to require special permit in the residential district and not require it in the business district, we do have to rewrite this sentence um, to make that clear. If you're going to require a special permit everywhere, then you need to change um, the use table to reflect that. We still have to worry about that problem. But what you're suggesting is that some 
agricultural uses that are not subject to state protection would be permissible by right and some by special permit. Yes. You could do that if you, if, if, if you choose. That, that was just in response to someone's previous suggestion that we remove the special permitting requirement for these particular uses. We, we will take a vote on this. If you, if you would like to try to make another, propose another amendment after this, I will look for your hand. Further discussion on this, yes. Um, Cynthia Cool, Precinct 6. It says, um, Part B, it says any structure used for garaging or screening of tools, farm machinery, or vehicles, um, or for providing housing pens or enclosures for livestock. Now, how do we get bees from livestock or rabbits or poultry? I consider that, you know, cows, um, horses, pigs, um, something like that. I mean, it, it already says at the, at the top, it says special permit without a special permit. But I don't think uh, 50 feet even applies to this. Any comment? No. Further discussion? Oh, do you have a comment, Mr. Mayor? Well, left to my own devices, I would have, I would agree with you and say that livestock means, does not mean things like bees. Um, where, where this is now, it, um, it provides one standard for, clearly provides one standard for chickens, or poultry, I'm sorry, um, rabbits and bees, and a different standard for everything else perfectly fine, but um, it, if that's what this group wants, then, then that's what they've got. If you want something different, you can propose something different. Ms. West? Yeah, and just, I'm, I'm just looking at this in terms of the special permit component as well. I'm, I'm wondering if it's possible to get rid of all the extra stuff and put large animal in front of livestock which is essentially what we're talking about. People don't want pigs and horses and cows, right? I, I, I don't know if, that's a, if that works. And if that doesn't work, then the other option might be to um, say, accept that housing pens enclosures for poultry, rabbits, or bees lo must, must be located at least 15 feet from the property line and leave off the rest of the special permit because we don't necessarily need a special permit if we don't have it today. Does that second one work better, Ray, than the first one? <laughs> so, going to leave, if you're going to leave the reference to poultry, rabbits, or bees, then I don't think you, I, that, that you want to put the word large because, no, no, I don't want both. you know, because you don't want both because you'll end up with something, some kind of animal that's halfway in between. Um, <laughs> so, But you don't have to make it by special permit. You could do it, just say, uh, provided, however, the housing pens or enclosures for poultry, rabbits, or bees may be located, in this case, I would change it to um, not less than 15 feet from any property line, period. So, so that will be my, my, my proposed amendment. Then. Okay, I'll be watching for you. <laughs> um, Further discussion on the amendment, the proposed amendment we have before us. Mr. Tuttle. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Dave Tuttle of Precinct 3. Uh, as a homeowner with a 25,000 square foot lot in S20, I want to, to uh, 
talk against the amendment because I believe that the agricultural use in a residential district is improper uh, as a zoning decision. You know, I, I don't really want my next door neighbor to have uh, pigs or ferrets or, uh, you know, breeding dogs for sale 15 feet from my property. Thank you. Further discussion on the amendment, opposed amendment? None appearing? Oh, and I'll take you out of that. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Greg Savitelli, Precinct 6. Uh, with a special permit, would there be a notification to the neighbors so they could come and give their input as to whether they would have issues with the 15 feet or 50 feet setback for poultry? Mr. Mieres. So all special permit processes require a hearing and require notice. Um, uh, our, actually, the bylaw goes a little bit beyond state law because State law requires notice to abutters and to abutters to abutters within 300 feet. But our bylaw requires notice to everyone within 300 feet, whether they are abutters to abutters or not. Thank you. And, and if, um, if this one failed in the other conversation about putting it up top about 15 feet back for all poultry, would that not mean that a large commercial agriculture group could come in and have, a 15, have poultry then 15 feet from your, from your lot, if you put that into a general statement? Doesn't it actually sort of, you know, make it worse for, you know, you might be trying to help the residential use uh, for a low, you know, for, for low use, but you might actually make it worse for those large companies that may come in. Yes. Well, without commenting on the, pub, on the policy implications of what you're saying, where we stand right now under the, under the use table is that in commercial districts, um, these uses are permitted, and residential districts, they're permitted only by special, by special permit. Um, so what that would mean, I guess, in a, if, somebody, um, if somebody was in a residential district and was proposing the sort of thing that you're talking about, they'd have to come in and get a special permit, and I imagine that, that the CPDC would be concerned about the impacts on the neighbors. Um, okay. Mr. Herrick. Uh, Steve Herrick, uh, Precinct 8. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I can see the headlines now. Uh, town meeting spends the entire evening talking about the birds and the bees. Um, <laughs> I just, I just want to make sure I understand this fully, because uh, I'm still stuck on Mr. Diderio's question. Uh, it says up there, unless it produces less than $1,000 per acre, does that mean you need a special permit if it's little, but you don't if it's big? So if you have a four-acre lot and you're generating $20,000 an acre because it's a booming operation, no permit needed. Am I, am I, I just want to make sure I understand this. And, and this is driven by the, the state. So we don't have any choice in how we phrase that. Is this not up to us, or? Yes. Okay. Further discussion? Ms. O'Neill? Mary Ellen O'Neill, Precinct 4. Um, can we just, um, I'm against this because I think we should make an exception for these animals. I mean, it seems silly if you want to have a bunny hutch out in your yard, you're going to need a special permit. So can we just quickly review uh, what is the current policy with regard to these animals? Bees, I assume there's nothing. People can just have bees if they want. Is there any Board of Health regulation on those? Do we have a response? Ms. Elios? Jean Delios, there are Board of Health regulations on the keeping of animals, section two. Are bees defined, are, do, I think there are many people in town that have beehives, do they? Okay, so.
This is a relatively long document that is governed by the Board of Health, so I'm not terribly familiar with it, um, but it does talk about protecting the public health in Reading and as it relates to the keeping of animals. Um, and there are, these are the regulations to protect health and safety of the public. Um, it goes on to say it's, um, the authority lies within Mass General Law Chapter 111, Section 31 and 155. Uh, regulations are not intended to unreasonably regulate the use of land for commercial agriculture. Commercial agriculture may be limited by town bylaw to activities on parcels of five acres or more or on parcels of two acres or more if the sale, again, uh, mm -hmm. produced from the agricultural use in the parcel generates at least $1,000. That goes back to that same standard. So as far as what types of animals it regulates. But that's all commercial. So we don't, right now we just, we don't really have, there's no special permit required for any of these, these three little subsets. And I understand of yeah. livestock, but we didn't define that in definition, so we're not protected by that. So I, I just, I don't want to bother you with all that yeah. time. I just think that we should vote this down and then make an exception for those um, few groups of creatures. Uh, who's speaking? Could you use the microphone? Peter Leidecker, Precinct 1. Could you just clarify what you read? I think you said it's at least 1,000 as opposed to less than 1,000. I said that it's uh, on parcels annually generate at least 1,000 per acre based at, on gross sales. At least as opposed to less than, which is what this says. Yeah, this says Mass General Law, Chapter 48, Section 3. I don't know if that's, okay. that's what it's saying. That's because, that's because this thing says we are not regulating anything that is more than $1,000. And this one says we're only regulating things that are less than $1,000. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Yes. Uh, Gary Phillips, Precinct 7. I do urge approval of this amendment. Um, we've had chickens, and uh, though it's not spelled out, I, I believe it's uh, common knowledge that roosters are not allowed in a residential area. Um, and we've just, all we can say is that um, uh, as far as poultry goes, it's um, probably one of the least expensive forms of livestock you could have in a neighborhood. And with the interest of the neighbors are concerned, where, whereas there is notification in any approval process, I think that their, their needs and rights are uh, sufficiently protected. But I, I strongly urge that you approve of this. There's something great about raising chickens and having organic eggs for breakfast. Thank you. Further discussion? We will take a vote on the proposed amendment, which adds oh, adding the words provided, however, that housing pens or enclosures for poultry, rabbits, or bees at least 15 feet away from any property line may be authorized by special permit. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. Ms. West, oh. did, did, that, did I hear? Need to get to the Who's microphone. Still we have a motion to adjourn. Uh, this is, a, uh, is there a second? Second. This is a non-debatable motion. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion carries. This town meeting stands adjourned. Thank you.